what is up and welcome back guys in today's video i'm going to be teaching you step by step on how to make these planters using only three fence pickets and yes we're still using fence pickets because they're actually getting cheaper i've received tons and tons of comments and success stories on the original three picket planter so what i did was redesigned it made it bigger these things are not small. This one is 18 inches across. And I was still able to make the entire planter using only three pickets. So if you're interested in the making money with woodworking or the business side of things, make sure to hang around to the end. I have a super exciting story to tell you guys. I'll be sharing with you how one of our subscribers was able to make over $10,000 on the side selling a single planter design over this past winter. So hang around to the end for that. And if you have any brags, any builds, anything that you want to share with the community, I'm in the process of making a permanent home for that. But in the meantime, head to the link in the description to check that out. And while you are there, make sure to check out our Patreon community. And I've been getting a lot of questions about what is Patreon and what are the benefits of it. So what it is, is behind the scenes content. It's Q&A type things. It's just a more personal experience to the channel and actually helps to keep me from having to put in all these sponsored ads that you see on all of these other channels. It's just an awesome community where questions can be answered and we can have some fun. And if you like builds like this, I have plenty of this stuff to come. Make sure to smash that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. So I have a lot to cover. So let's go ahead and dive into this video. All right, guys, so let's get started. First, I have to throw on my Ninja outfit, which is my axle hearing protection, of course. And I decided to add a little color and spice things up a bit with my new RZ mask. Actually, instead of a Ninja, I think I look more like character from Star Wars. And we're just going to start by sanding down our fence pickets. It's only going to take three for this build. You can use either pine or cedar for this, but since the price of cedar has gone down in my area to three and a quarter per board, I'd rather work with the cedar. But if you're planning on painting this, go ahead and go with the pine because it's only two bucks per board. Just make sure that whatever pickets that you decide on, that they are actually five and a half inches wide. And this is important because the cool part about this build is that every single part in this planter is one and three quarter inch wide. So that's what you see me doing here. I'm just ripping all of my picks down to an inch and three quarter, and then we'll move to our lengths. And as always, I'll be throwing the cut list in the description, or if you're a plans in the hand type of person, head over to the Etsy shop, and I'll throw a link in the description for this set of plans. So what I'm doing here is just cutting out my different length of slats. And there's a couple of different ways that you can cut these parts. You can cut them all square like this to start with, then add your angles later, or you can actually add the angles as you cut. And for this build, any angle that I mention will be at eight degrees off center. And I'll go into a little more detail about that here in a minute. It's really not that hard. So as an example, I'm cutting my leg boards now, and I'll just put an eight degree cut on one end, slide the board down, make another eight degree cut on the opposite end. And this is an example of cutting my top boards, putting eight degrees on one end, flipping the board over and putting eight degrees on the opposite end. Okay, so now all of our parts are cut and some of these I just square cut. I'll actually be adding my angle here in a moment and every angle in this build will be at eight degrees. You can put your angles on while you're cutting out the material. So a couple of different ways of doing it. So I'm just kind of showing you both ways. So all of the cross boards, I went ahead and added my angles to and the angles will just face into each other. All of the legs, I went ahead and put my angles on and the angles will actually face away from each other. Now these four boards here I'm just going to set aside because this is actually going to be my trim for the end and all of these boards here will go together to make up my plates for each one of my panels. So I cut all the plates for the panel square. So let's go ahead and add the eight degrees to each end of these. And for the slats for these plates we want the angles to be facing in. So we'll put eight degrees on one end and then flip the board over leaving the same edge against the fence and put eight degrees on the opposite end. This will make the angles face in. And now with all of our angles cut, you can kind of see how our plates are gonna look. So if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I like to separate this out into sides so everything kind of stays organized. So let's go ahead and do that. So while I'm making my little wall kits up here, just a reminder that most of the pickets that we are finding now are only about a half of an inch thick. I think that they actually count the fur that sticks up as the five eighths. Okay, so for the sides, side A is going to be a little bit longer than side B. So the B panels will actually be sitting inside of the A panels. So we have to account for the half of an inch overlap on each side. Okay, so now that I have everything broken down into my little kits, 
which is a weird thing that I do. Let's go ahead and head over to the 720 and throw some pocket holes in the ends of some of these parts. Okay, now we're over here at the 720. The only parts in this build that will be getting pocket holes will be the eight cross members, and that's counting for the sides of A and B. So as you place your cross member in, make sure that the side that you want seen is facing out. We're going to let it rest in the jig at the eight degrees. It doesn't matter which one that you're using, 72520 or even the K4, you want this to sit in here at this angle whenever you lock it down you want this outer edge to be flush with the hole marking to the one that's the furthest to the right because we're going to be using the two holes that are closest together let me show you what i mean this is what we want because of the angle we actually want to raise it up a bit so now whenever we do the opposite side because it was sitting in here like this we're going to flip it over and we want this edge to line up with the marking for the hole to the left again we're having it to sit at that eight degrees and it lines up and this is what we want and fyi this bit is actually set at a half of an inch in depth and i know that i just called these cross members but they're more like top boards and bottom boards so these will be parts b through e on the cut list and while i'm finishing these up just a reminder if you've made it this far you're obviously a little interested in these types of builds, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell. Okay, so now with our pocket hose drilled, let's put these things together. So in a previous build, I've gotten a lot of comments from people that were having issues with splitting and tear out. The reason for this is, for some reason over the last year, fence pickets have gotten thinner. They're supposed to be 5 8 of an inch thick, and you can rarely find them that are 5 8 thick. So we're just going to account for, from now on, our fence pickets are going to be about a half of an inch thick. So I'm going to change the screw up a bit. I'm going to use a 1 inch pan head screw, and this is actually made for half of an inch material. Another change that I'm going to do is, instead of the coarse thread, I'm going to use a fine thread. Since we're using wood glue with this build, we can actually decrease the thread's diameter by switching to this fine thread. And they're pretty much the same price. So let's get these put together. So like I mentioned before, we're gonna have two different sizes of sidewalls. So we're just gonna call them A and B. Right now I'm assembling the frames for the sidewalls A. So we'll be using parts A, B, and C that are in the description. So that will consist of two legs, a top board, and a bottom board. And all of the bottom boards on all four sides will be spaced two and a quarter inches up from the longest point of the legs. And just a tip, make sure the tip of the legs are facing in towards each other. And then we'll just repeat those steps for the frames for sidewall B, except we'll be using parts A, D, and E. Okay, so with the frames for all four sides put together, let's go ahead and start to put our slats on. We're going to be using wood glue and a one inch brad nail. Make sure you set up your brad nailer to install the nail flush, that way you don't actually go through the other side of your material. Okay, so we're going to be installing slats G through K on the side of the frame with the pocket hose. We'll add wood glue around the frame, and then I'm going to measure up an inch and a sixteenth from the bottom of slat K to the bottom of my bottom board. And then I'll just center up all my sides and lock everything down with brad nails. If you really wanted, you could put some three quarter inch screws in these slats, but I don't think it's needed. And our first sidewall is finished. Piece of pecan pie. And then we'll just repeat this process for our second sidewall A as well as our sidewalls B. And if any of you guys or gals out there decide to make these, do not forget to send them to the brag board. Links in the description. I love seeing all the unique concepts that you guys come up with. And once you have all four of your panels made up, and then you notice that you've installed the slats on the wrong side of your frame, just shake it off, fix the happy little accident, and keep going. Like I mentioned, if you really wanted to, you can install screws in these slats. But with this outdoor wood glue, I really don't think that it's necessary. But if you do decide to put those in, make sure to pre-drill and actually countersink just a bit to keep the wood from splitting. Okay, so with our four sidewalls assembled, let's go ahead and attach those. And to do that, we're going to start by pre-drilling our screw holes in frames A. The top and bottom screws will be one inch in from the ends, and the center screw will be centered. All of these holes will be one quarter of an inch from the outside edge. And to attach the walls, I'm going to be using an inch and a quarter deck screw. So I'll set my bit to an inch and a quarter, place a frame B against the inside of frame A, and then using the hose that we've already pre-drilled in A, we'll pre-drill again so that it reaches frame B. Install your screws and repeat for your remaining sidewalls A and B. And this base actually reminded me of the one from Little Shop of Horrors, so I had to reenact the scene. 
Feed me, Seymour. Anybody else out there remember that movie? Okay, so Stickley's obviously a hater, so let's just move on. That's all that we need to do to make these two half planters into a whole planter is to just push them together and finish installing our screws into our sidewalls A. And now it's starting to look like a planter. The only thing left that we have to do is to put on our trim and the slats on the bottom. Okay, so to cut our top trim, we're going to be using a miter bevel. Don't freak out, I'll walk you through it. Set your miter at 45 degrees to the left, and then your bevel at 8 degrees to the left. So your saw plates should now look like this, 8 degrees and 45 degrees. And these will be labeled part M on our cut list. Once you've made your first cut, you just flip the board over, leaving the longest points against the fence. Change the bevel to 8 degrees to the right, leaving you with a 17 and 3 quarter inch board from tip to tip. So this is what you want. I have my boards upside down on the table and with the longest parts of the bevel touching each other, whenever you fold it in, it closes the gap. This will allow for our trim to set at the same angle as the rest of the planter, eight degrees. Now to install the trim. I'm just gonna mark my screw placement and pre-drill my holes. Once that's done, I'll attach the trim with the same inch and a quarter deck screws that we used earlier. And keep in mind with using fence pickets, your angles may not line up exactly but they are super forgiving with just a little bit of sanding, it will look great. Now installing our floorboards L is a lot easier. Since the entire box is at an eight degree angle, you may have to angle your boards to get them into place. Once they're in place, we're just gonna pre-drill and then add some screws. And there it is, another beautiful three picket planter that I'm sure will sell like crazy. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. So now let's get into the business side of things. Let's get into the marketing side of things with these and let's get into the story that I told you about. So recently I was contacted by another subscriber. I've been contacted by tons and tons of people who have just sold our planner designs like crazy. And a lot of them you can see examples of on the breakboard. Make sure to check that out and like my ideas Use some of their ideas to grow on. Don't copy it, but expand upon it and put your twist to it. The gentleman that contacted me was not a woodworker. This is a side hustle to him. The job that he has, the winter time is his off season. So I picked out one planter design, which was the long farmhouse planter and put his own twist to it. He was able to sell over 100 of these planters at prices ranging from $100 to $130, depending on whether he put flowers in them or not. So that's the things that we've been talking about, the things that I've been trying to teach. Do not just take an item and set it out there. Stage it up, even if it's not that time of the year, like this fake plant here. And that is how someone can make $10,000 during the winter time, the off season for planters. Typically it is thought of that people buy planters in the spring, but through great marketing and making great products, he took the evergreen approach to his items. So an item that will sell year round. And that is proof. If you can sell a flower pot in the winter, think about what he would be able to do in the spring. And again, this is a side hustle. This is not his full-time job. And check out his build layout. It's very organized. He has a build station. He has all of his parts cut and ready to be put together. This is a perfect layout and a perfect way to make a ton of money. So that is proof that these things can sell and he tested his area. He tested his market and that is going to be crucial. So what he discovered is that he can get around a $100 price range for the double planter. You need to test your area. You may be able to get $200 or you may be able to get 50. But really with the cost that you have in the product, even a $50 sale is a ton of profit. So basically whatever you're selling is worth what you can get out of it. And if you can get $200 or if you can get $100, then go get it. And the main takeaways, I know I've said it a hundred times, stage your item up, do your homework on your area and your marketing so you know what sells, what doesn't, and the things that do sell, how much can you get out of them? People write me every day asking what they should charge for this, well, it really depends on your area and what people are paying for items like that. So do the research, put it out there and see what type of response that you get. And you may be surprised. And also branding. He had his logo on all of his planters. People saw his planters out in someone's backyard, in their home, and they knew exactly where to go get them. So make sure to put your brand, your logo, or even a little tag on any product that you sell. So that's it for today, guys. And if you like this type of thing, again, I have several other outdoor garden related products already built and ready to start recording the videos for them. So in the meantime, 
get your spring items ready. Remember how I've said you follow what the big box stores are doing. And if you go in any of them right now, the shelves are going to be stocked with spring items. So even if it's still cold outside, it's time to get ready. So until next time, guys, I want you to find an item that you think is a spring item. I want you to build it. And then I want you to sell it because right now it's still cold outside in areas. People are getting ready. They're getting fired up and they're ready for spring items. And do not forget to have some fun while you are doing it. Till next time, guys. See ya.